Hey everybody, welcome back to today's video. By the way, Happy New Year's. Uh, for those of you who enjoyed your New Year's, um, for those of you other parts of the world, your New Year's is probably done now. Or if you, again, if you are in another part of the world, uh, your New Year's, this probably is a New Year's Eve for you. Um, anyway, Happy New Year's and welcome to today's video. This is, I'm just gonna do a zone two ride and it looks like I'm looking at my badges that I have on Watopia and it looks like they have new routes available. Uh, Climbers Gambit, so if I click on this, I'm gonna get rid of my video here. Uh-oh, that's not what I want. Okay, well, we'll just keep it that way. Um, just gonna do a Climbers Gambit route. I'm gonna try to see if I can get the uh, badge for this and I know that I'm wearing a sweatshirt. It does kind of get chilly down here. Let me just see if I can adjust. There you go. Uh, so if you are new to Zwift, um, this, for those of you, of my viewers, especially my students who don't really know what Zwift is, it is a virtual platform where your uh, bike is connected to a smart trainer and you can basically pedal in this virtual world. And so you see on the right side, uh, a couple of people's names. Uh, those are actual real people and you'll see like what country they're in um, based on the flag next to their name and you can communicate to people on Zwift. And, uh, you know, talk to them. Uh, you can also join group rides. And uh, I was initially going to do a group ride, but for this, I'm not going to because I just don't want to fuss with it. Group rides have specific times that you join and I'm kind of late on the group ride that I wanted to join. It started at 11 and it's 11.26 right now. So I'm, no, I'm not gonna do that. So anyway, uh, my avatar you can see is Where's my mouse? You can see this one right here with a white helmet. And uh, yeah, I can, you can have steering on Zwift, but I don't have the uh, device that helps my avatar to steer. So I wanted to get on camera today to talk about how my 2021 year went. Yesterday we actually did a ride and uh, outside and I had the camera set up. We were, you know, I had a set camera set up and talking to camera uh, while Jason was ahead of me and I did the same thing with him. I went ahead of him had the camera set up in my seat post facing him. And uh, the audio, the microphone that we use, which is the Rode Micro, which is right here in my chest, wasn't rec didn't actually record any of the audio. So <laughs> that was pretty frustrating when I came home and found out that none of the audio recorded. I could use the audio on the camera, but The audio on the camera is not very clear, especially when you're, uh, you know, when you're far away. So I just got to fix my necklace. So anyway, so we had to scratch that video. And, uh, 
decided to do this ride today. Ah, anyway, um, so I wanted to talk to you guys about how 2021 went. Uh, it wasn't my best year on the bike. It was surprising. There was some fun things that happened and some unexpected things that happened. Uh, I'll be talking about the outro to my Build Me Up training plan, which I didn't actually do a proper outro after that, after completing that training plan. Um, I'll talk about our trip to Maine, uh, mountain biking, and some positive things with my fitness, which didn't occur in the beginning of the year or middle of the year. So let me get started by talking about the Build Me Up training plan. Uh, in the beginning of the year, I uh, started off the year with this plan on Zwift. Um, it started out good and then it got progressively more challenging and uh, unfortunately towards the end it was really hard for me to get the power out that I wanted. It was hard for me to get or to meet my targets and I was feeling discouraged from it. Um, but after finishing that, I realized I think I set my FTP, FTP a little too high. And uh, especially during the base phase of my uh, season. And so it was really hard for me to to hit those targets. So I have learned now that as intensity builds, I should be dropping my volume. And when I was doing that plan, I was actually increasing my, my volume as in duration of my rides, I was increasing it, but my intensity was also increasing. So you can't have both things increase at the same time. It should be, from what I learned, should be one or the other. Oh, this is a sprint section, which I'm not going to do. So I uh, learned that lesson the hard way and uh, didn't know about it until, of course, later on in this year where I uh, listened to more coaches talk about intensity and volume and how... Uh, the two actually have a um, disproportionate relationship, I guess, where one goes up, the other one goes down, or vice versa. If one goes down, the other one goes up. Okay, so. I'm still warming up here. I uh, had breakfast. It's uh, 11.30 and I had breakfast not too long ago, so hopefully I'll be fine doing this ride. So let's see. So yeah, I learned about how to drop my volume, but just maintaining the intensity as we get closer to the end of the plan. 
I was doing, uh, it was really hard for me to avoid um, endurance rides. I love endurance rides. And that is doing long rides outside. That's always something that I look forward to on the weekends because on the weekdays, you know, with work and everything, you're kind of stuck inside. And uh, I get the itch to go outside on the weekends. So it's really hard for me to drop my volume. Uh, so the build me up plan in conclusion, I think if I were to do it again, I would definitely do what I just talked about. And uh, I think I only missed one workout on that plan. Some of the workouts I did outside. And if you want to know how to replicate those workouts outside, it's not 100%. But um, you go on this website called whatsonzwift.com, whatsonzwift.com. And uh, see how long you're spending on threshold, tempo, recovery, and just do a custom workout. Um, if you have a Wahoo or I don't know what head unit you have, I use Training Peaks to build my workouts and it syncs with the Wahoo and when I turn it on, the workout just loads. So if you're looking to do some of these workouts outside, that's something that you can do. The next thing is I also did a uh, follow training plan, another one that I, it was a Fondo plan. plan. Um, this one is from Training Peaks. And again, really hard for me to hit the target. And uh, and it was even more discouraging to see that. So I actually ended the training block pretty discouraged with myself. And I think that didn't really uh, help me in my mental game in the summer because I was kind of feeling sort of down about my power and how I was riding at like average 110 to 115 on my long endurance rides. And you know, I felt pretty discouraged. I knew that I could do better than what uh, it showed. So yeah, part of me was feeling pretty discouraged because of that. And a key word to 2021 is discourage. Only for the f maybe two thirds of 2021. I feel like I have to use bathroom break. All right. So let's get back on the road. I don't know what I was, where I left off. I think I might have left off on talking about the trait, the Fondo plan. Yeah, so the Fondo plan, I didn't really hit any of the targets or some workouts, it was hard for me to do the targets. It was especially hard for me to do the long 
tempo workouts, the sub threshold efforts. Uh, my, my legs were so tired from the endurance rides that it was just really hard. It started to get really hard. So, it yeah, left the block kind of feeling down and uh, so it didn't really help me with the mental game that can play a role when you're let me just get off it didn't really help with my mental game I guess is what I'm trying to say So after that, I uh, decided, or we went on a trip to Maine, and uh, I had planned a 150-mile ride from Carabasset Valley to uh, Acadia National Park, and at the end would be climbing um, climbing Cadillac Mountain. So on our first full day there, got to Maine, first full day, we're so excited, we rented mountain bikes. I brought my mountain bike, Jason rented his, my sister and her girlfriend rented, and uh, Two miles into our ride, Jason crashed and split his elbow open. So that kind of stopped, well, I mean, not kind of, it did halt that plan of riding a century and a half with Jason's elbow. So uh, we still enjoyed the trip. I actually encouraged Jason to mountain bike. So he went mountain biking again. A few days later, he felt better. Well, sort of better. Um, he was still very sore. I remembered uh, he just couldn't handle the bumps and the shaking on the mountain bike because it would bother his his abdomen or his abdominal muscles so we just took it easy but yeah that was a fun trip because it got into Jason into mountain biking as well as my sister's girlfriend Christy got into mountain biking in fact when we came back from that trip she went and bought a full suspension mountain bike Yeah, and so it worked out because Christy's also a teacher and she had the summers off. So I had someone to go mountain biking with. We scouted out a few trails. Um, and fortunately, school started and then we couldn't go riding anymore. But Jason wound up getting a mountain bike himself. He got Canyon's Grand Canyon. And uh, he was a little scared to, to ride it. Sorry, got a drink of water. He was a little afraid to ride, um, especially on the downhill parts. But I showed him how to 
feather the brakes and just be aware of his surroundings. And uh, after he shook the nerves off, he started to get a little better at it. Uh, he still did uh, wipe out a couple of times, but nothing to the extent of what happened in Maine. I think he's learned to be a little bit more uh, observant of his surroundings. So, no, he's gotten better with it. So yeah, that was, I did more mountain biking in 2021 ever. Um, and I'm looking to do more mountain biking this new year of 2022. So towards the later part of the summer, we did a last trip together to Mystic, Connecticut. And, uh, I mapped that route from Mystic, Connecticut to the coast of Rhode Island and back. So it was a loop uh, and it was a century ride. And uh, that trip was so much fun. That ride was a lot of fun. I mean, it was such a beautiful ride in these backcountry roads, mostly paved. I don't think we ever hit any gravel, um, but it was just these country roads and hardly any cars. And then we did connect to the South County Trail in Rhode Island, which was a little bit more busier, but they had such a wide lane for cyclists that it really didn't bother me. <clears throat> so yeah, we did do our uh, long epic ride <laughs> that summer. And I think part of the reason why I was disappointed is because I didn't really do as many epic rides as I wanted to. I don't know if it was just not motivated or I was just tired from 2020 because I did a lot of uh, I did a lot of volume. I actually did, I rode more miles, more days, and more climbing in 2020 than I did in 2021. So, not sure if I was just, um, just tired that I needed a break from it. So after our trip to Mystic, you know, we did a few more rides and then October, the weather got cooler and uh, the foliage, the fall foliage was starting to come through and I took Jason to this route that I've ridden by myself before. And uh, it was a ride to up Mohawk Mountain in Cornwall, Connecticut. And it started off in Lake Warramug. <clears throat> and we rode up to, uh, to Mohawk such a fun ride and 
It was about 50 miles with almost 4,000 feet. I think it was a little over shy of 4,000 feet of climbing. And I hit my best ever power number for three hours. I did an average of 100, 140 watts for over three hours. Average speed was 15.8 and average cadence was 81. So just to give you guys some context, I mentioned it earlier of where I was coming from. I was hovering around 110, 115 average power on my endurance rides. And all of a sudden, I didn't realize that I could push 140 watts for that long. So I was super thrilled. And I was just ex excited, you know, that I could do that power. And after that, I would average probably my lowest was 125 or 130. And all my rides have been at least over 125 watts after October. And usually they say that you're just pushing less power in the winter time if you're riding outside because by the way, these numbers that I'm quoting you are all numbers that I've written outside, not on Zwift. Zwift is a little, uh, it's a little easier to put out the power, I think, because you don't have like potholes or you don't have to stop for traffic. You don't need to slow down for anything. So I always feel like I do a little bit better power on Zwift than I can outside. So, you know, that got me really excited and that's the unexpected thing that happened to me in 2021 was just finding out that I do have a good aerobic base built up. It was just a lot of mental things that were um, interfering with my progress. And uh, it's amazing how your view and your outlook of life or in this case of rides can really dictate your performance. And I think that lesson rings true in all different aspects of life. I think sometimes we forget that things can get hard, things can be challenging, and it's just harder to achieve, but, and it's easier for many of us to just give up, throw in the towel, and say you're done. But if you're patient, and you have the perseverance, the tenacity, and the consistency, you'll see, you'll benefit or you'll reap the rewards of it afterwards. For me, it was about two years, it took me two years to hit those kinds of power readings. And many people are not patient enough to wait that long, but you have to be if you want to continue to see 
improvement in yourself. So that was the biggest lesson learned in 2021 was just to be patient with myself and with my fitness. So uh, one other thing, one other epic ride that we did in 2021 was uh, the recent one this week. We just did. We just finished riding 500 kilometers from uh, Christmas Eve to New Year's Eve day. That was yesterday. 500K is over 300 miles, 310 miles, I believe. And uh, yeah, we uh, split the ride. The first few days, I rode 40 miles a day, I think for three or four days. And I took a day off on Tuesday and on Wednesday, I rode a century ride over 100 miles indoors. People thought I was crazy when I said that. Uh, I ate French toast the entire time. Every 45 minutes, I would have a French toast with maple syrup, of course. So legs are pretty tired from that. And uh, I wasn't going to do a ride today, but I figured before school begins and I don't get to do, I don't get to ride my bike as often, I might as well uh, take advantage of the time that I have. I'm also planning to take a week off from training this week, this coming week. Just no riding my bike. Probably gonna go for walks more. And just let the body recover uh, from uh, this week. So, plans and goals for 2022. Plan, the only plan we have written in the calendar is to do this challenge. It's called the second annual Connecticut Segment Championship of the Universe. I think that's what it's called. And uh, this challenge is found in different parts of Connecticut. The event director posts the segment in, Stra in Strava. And uh, you do the segment. It's every two weeks for 10 weeks. So, there's, so there are five segments. And whoever comes first in the category, there's a ton of categories. One man, uh, one of them is male, female category, and there's other categories. Uh, whoever comes first wins 50% of the entrance fee. So that event starts tomorrow, and we have two weeks to ride that segment. By the way, this challenge is you do have to pay the entrance fee of $20. Um, upside to that is that we don't really have to race with anyone because we can do, we have two weeks to do the segment. So, uh, Jason and I are going to find, hopefully, take a look to see what the first segment will be and we'll tackle that, all five segments hopefully.
depending on how far it is. And then I also, this is not written in the calendar, but I'm also hoping to do a, uh, to map out a tour of Connecticut ride. And the idea behind it is to ride to different historic bed and breakfast all over Connecticut. So this is kind of like a bike touring, bike packing kind of deal. And, uh, and just kind of ride around Connecticut. You know, I lived here most of my life and I'm still at awe at how beautiful the scenery is. If you just go out there, whether on foot or on a bike, going slow, you know, you, I look up, look around and it's like, oh, this place is beautiful. So that is another plan. The goal is just to stay focused on performance. Um, I would like to see more fitness gains. My FTP has not increased, um, did not increase in 2021. And, uh, and I'm not looking to be, to get crazy power numbers uh, on my FTP, but I would like to improve it. Um, and one of the things, as I reflect on this, one of the uh, reasons why I think my FTP didn't really increase, or sorry, not my FTP, but my power numbers weren't that great. And some of these endurance rides that I did was because I was vlogging during that. Hold on. And as much as I enjoy sharing the rides with you guys, I think sometimes I need to focus on the ride itself for me. That's why you've been seeing a lot more of these Safa style videos where I just have the camera either following Jason or myself mounted on my helmet and just, you can see the ride. You know, it's like a long format video, no talking, or there are some talking, um, no B-roll, no music, purely just riding. And I didn't really do a whole lot of that in 2021, just ride to ride. It was, a lot of it was vlogging. And uh, I'm still gonna be posting videos. I think what I am gonna do is just more, more focus on riding itself. And uh, especially the long format rides, like 30 to 50 minutes long. If you're not familiar with who Safa is or Brian Safa, S-A-F-A, -A, look him up on YouTube. And he does some amazing rides and the cinematography of it is amazing. And it's just pure riding. Just you hear the gear shifting. You can hear the uh, birds chirping. Sometimes you'll hear the cars flying by, the heavy breathing, but, and that's what riding is all about. 
you do have, I mean, once in a while I'll catch myself humming tunes, but riding just to ride is like a meditative state. You know, you just clear your mind. You focus on the road you're riding on or that next climb. You know, you're not worrying about any other thing around you. Or not worried about what to do for work, you know? You're just clearing your head. So, I'm definitely gonna do more of those types of videos. Um, I also really like documentary style videos. And so the plan is to document our tour of Connecticut. Um, part of me is wondering if thinking of whether or not considering putting it as an audio diary or it could be a video diary of our ride. That's still up in the air. And uh, we're hoping to get new bikes in 2022 if we can get our hands on one. Preferably a gravel bike, but it's crazy how there's not many available. It's crazy. We have two in mind. Well, when I say we, I meant I have two in mind. I'm usually the one who decides what to do with bikes. Jason's just like, do whatever you want. So we do have two gravel bikes in mind and I don't really wanna share it with you guys yet of what, uh, what bike, what manufacturer we're gonna go for. Uh, but we do have a couple in mind and hopefully we get our hands on them soon so we could do a test ride in the winter time because I wanna have some fun in the snow with some gravel bikes. Yeah, my necklace. I should probably give people some ride-ons. So it looks like I have five miles left of this route before I get a badge. Yeah, it's been a, I don't think I've ever done a Zwift ride video. I think I've done my build me up plan in this format, but not a long format. According to this, I've been riding for 43 minutes. Woohoo, ride ons. Let me see if I can open up the 
companion app and give some ride-ons. Taking a while for it to come up. All right, there you go. By the way, because I did a, my first century ride on Zwift a couple days ago, I got this jersey, this 100 mile jersey. It's a kind of a, it's a pretty plain jersey, but I'm rocking it now. So hopefully everybody had a great New Year's or had a great festivities, had fun with their New Year's Eve festivities. Hopefully you stayed safe. Um, we didn't do much here. We usually go to bed pretty early. So, oh my gosh. Am I doing the epic KOM? Ay -ay -ay. You guys could see up ahead, there's this switchback that goes all the way to the top. <sighs> That's gonna take me, it says I have four miles left of this route probably going to take me, depending, 45 more minutes, especially when I have to do all that climbing. Spin, spin, spin. I'm not actually planning to do any more than an hour though. so. We'll see how this goes. In real life, if I see this climb, I'd probably freak out. So, yeah, that's it for my uh, recap of 2021. I think. Yesterday I, hit a, I did a much better job at explaining how the year went. Um, but like I said, the microphone forgot to record. But hopefully I gave you guys some recap of, a decent recap of 2021. Here's to a great year, 2022. Some of you may set goals and others may not care for setting goals, but Hopefully, you can work hard to achieve those goals. And uh, if you don't get to it or if you fail at achieving it, hopefully you learn from the failures because that's the only way to learn, right? All right, this is a 
I want to stop talking now. And focus on completing this route. Twelve percent. I hope I don't end at the radio tower. That would be brutal. Because I feel like every route that I choose avoids the actual epic KOM segment and reverts me to the uh, radio tower climb. grindy, steep one. Oh, get up this thing.
three miles. Just gonna ride on here.
Oh man, this part is long. One point nine. <clears throat> A 
Oh, steep. Whoa, 12 year old girl got fastest time on Fuego Flats. I wonder if this woman ahead of me is a member of the ATP racing. She has the ATP racing jersey on, which is, uh, I believe, considered a pro e-sport women's racing team. Honey, 1.5 miles. I'm gonna be so sad if I have to go on the radio tower climb. All right, looks like we have some downhill and then another uphill. What? Plant Climber's Gambit? Oh, okay. Oh, good. Jason just told me that this route does end on a, at the KOM. Good. Oops.
One mile. Almost at the top. Well, too bad I don't have a feather power up. That draft power up doesn't do me any good. Uh-uh. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Almost there. Not yet. <clears throat> That's such a fun climb. I've always liked doing the epic KOM when it actually goes through the banner. I'm, uh, where am I? 13th place out of 21 women. Uh, some strong women there. Anyway, all right guys. Well, thank you. Let me get myself back. Thank you for uh, watching. Hope you uh, enjoyed this recap of 2021. Hopefully we can get Jason on to talk about how his 2021 went. Until next time, don't forget to enjoy your ride. Happy New Year. Bye-bye.